Hey everyone, it's that time of year again where we need to start thinking about getting our vans ready for winter. Now as relative newbies, this is our first winter of having our van. So we searched high and low to find out some information about what we should do. And I've collated all of that into this really short video. And we've also created a downloadable guide and checklist for free that you can get from our website. So I'll put a link to that in the notes connected to this video. Hi. We're James and Rob, and this is our dog, Oscar. It's a really steep learning curve when you start your motorhome, campervan, or caravan journey, and there is lots that we wish we had known. So we decided to document what we have learned and share with you our adventures as we head out on the road again. Whether you plan on hibernating your van for the whole winter, or just not using it for a few weeks, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you don't fall foul of a few frosty days that causes frozen tanks and broken pipes and lots of grief and money. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, we're fairly new to van life and this is our first year of having the van in the winter. Now, whilst we plan on using the van throughout the winter, we did our research and we've put together this really quick video and the checklist which you can download for free. So the saying, a stitch in time saves nine, is really true when it comes to getting your van ready for winter. And to be honest, we've run through everything that I am gonna outline in this video, and it really only takes about half an hour. So it's well worth spending half an hour to save loads of grief. So let's start with perhaps the most important thing, which is the water and the hot, uh, hot water system, since not doing this and not preparing this could be really costly. Now it's worth before you follow the steps that I'm gonna outline, just to clean and descale your water system and using something like PuraClean, you want to put it into your system, ideally leave it overnight and then flush the system the following day. And then when it comes to using your van at the beginning of next spring, you want to do the same thing again. So once this is done, I've just put together a really quick and simple five step system to drain down your water and your heating system. So number one is kind of an obvious thing, but you need to drain your system. So you want to either be over a drain where you can get rid of both your gray water and your clean water. Or if you can't do that like us because we store our van on a storage facility that doesn't have any draining facilities and obviously we don't just want to let any grey or clean water just run onto the ground, then use something like a Waste Master. To be honest, the Waste Master was one of the most useful things that we bought. And I'm going to do a video on stuff that we bought and stuff that we bought that we didn't need another time, but the Waste Master is definitely one of the most useful items. So what you want to do is you want to drain your clean water, then drain your waste water, and perhaps put your van on some ramps to angle it towards the draining um, outlets so that you make sure you get rid of all the water. So that's step number one, which is drain down your clean and your waste water. Step number two is once you're over a drain or you're over your waste master, you obviously want to open your taps to your clean water and then your waste water. And then you also want to open the tap to your water heater or your boiler. And this is usually found under a seat somewhere and it's usually a, a yellow lever that you need to um, turn so just read your manual or go onto one of the Facebook groups and ask there and I'm sure someone will help you with your specific um, your specific model. Now you also want to make sure your that your toilet cassette is completely empty. No one wants to leave that for a long time. And you also want to make sure it's clean so you can use something like Thetford Tank Cleaner. And then you want to make sure you've lubricated the paddle, the thing that opens and closes your toilet. And again, you can use something like Thetford Seal Lubricant. Now we're not sponsored by Thetford, they're just good products that we've used that we know they work. So that's number two, step two, which is drain down your clean water, your waste water, and clean out your toilet cassette. Obviously make sure it's empty and clean the whole thing and make sure it's lubricated. Step number three is open all your internal taps and leave them open until you use your vehicle next time. Any mixer taps that you've got, just put them into the mid position and then run your pump long enough to make sure that you've got any excess water out. So that's simple one. Step number three, open all your taps. That would be your kitchen taps, your bathroom taps, and then the other taps that you've got and let them drain down and use the pump to get rid of all your excess water. Step number four is that if you've got a shower head, then unscrew the shower head, remove any water from it, and then leave the shower pipe hanging down vertically into the, the shower basin so that any water in there will naturally, um, will naturally drain out. And obviously you can clean your shower head and all the rest of it. So another really simple one, 
So my last step is about petrol and it's kind of the opposite advice to everything else. So where I've told you to empty all your water tanks, you want to make sure that you've left your fuel tank as high as possible to prevent any condensation forming in the tank. So those are five simple steps that you need to do to clean out your water and heating system and get it completely empty and ready for the winter. And as I said, it's really not going to take you very long to do any of that. So let's move on to talk about some of the other internal jobs. So ideally you want to empty your van down to its basics, which means removing all your personal belongings, taking out your upholstery if you can, and then thoroughly cleaning everything inside and out. Cushions and bedding you ideally want to remove and store them in your house or a dry, safe place. But if it's not possible, then make sure that they're stored away from walls to create maximum air circulation. And a really good tip, which is something that we use for everything, is get those vacuum bags where you can put your bedding, your pillows, your cushions inside, suck all the air out using your vacuum cleaner. And not only will that mean that they are stored in a really compact place, but it also means that there'll be no moisture getting in there. And they are brilliant. We use them all year round, but they're a great tip for winter as well, especially if you don't have room at home or you don't have a home where you can store stuff like this then you can keep it in your van but just put it in a vacuum bag and keep it away from all the walls then you want to make sure that all your roller blinds or your blinds are kept up in the um, retracted position to protect the springs and protect um, the sort of sun bleaching them make sure that you leave all your doors and your cupboard doors so your room doors like the bathroom door and your cupboard doors open to keep air circulating and to make sure no moisture starts accumulating in any of those small nooks and crannies now there's lots of differences of opinions on the next tip that i'm going to share so i'd be really interested to hear what you guys think by leaving a comment to, connected to this video if you're lucky enough that you store your van on your driveway and you can keep it plugged in then you can use a small dehumidifier or even a small electric radiator. But obviously you wanna make sure that you watch out for vermin mice and stuff who are always looking for a clean, dry place to stay for the winter. So be mindful of that. And also know that dehumidifiers don't work in cold temperatures, um, which is why a heat is a good idea. But obviously if you are using a dehumidifier, make sure you're emptying it and don't use something like a fan heater without it being supervised. In fact, you need to be checking the van all the time. So if you're lucky enough to keep your van it, with power connected, then you can do this. But obviously for a lot of us like us, we don't have the luxury of doing that because where we store our van isn't close to home or a power point. So that means we can't follow this advice but I'm interested to know what you guys think about that because I've read a lot of conflicting information, but I just thought I would share it. So let's move on to talk about some of the external preparation that you can use. Now, again, there's a lot of discussion about putting covers over your van, but if you can put a breathable cover over your van, then that's good. But you obviously want to be careful about condensation. And that's particularly a problem with sealed campers. Um, and this is most likely to happen when you've put an external cover over. If you are using an external cover, one tip that I read is that if you put some tennis balls on the roof of your van, then it keeps the cover away from touching the roof or the sides, and that means the air continues to circulate, which will help with any kind of moisture and condensation. Alternatively, if you're leaving your van in the open, then try not put it under trees, and if you can park your van on a slope or even put ramps under one side of your van then that's going to mean that water is draining off your van this is what we're going to be doing when we're not using the van we're actually away out of the country for five weeks so we won't be using the van in mid-january to mid-february more on that later so we'll be parking our van without a cover and we'll be putting it on one side of it on ramps so any water drains off and we don't end up with puddles sitting on the roof which of course can lead to damp problems in your van if you've got external vent, uh, fridge vent covers, then put them on. And of course, don't forget to turn the gas off. So the last area to consider is your batteries. Now, even if you are parking your van up for the whole winter, ideally you'd want to run your engine every now and again and get your engine up to full operating temperature to ensure that oil is distributed and prevent any stress on your starter battery. By contrast, your leisure battery should either be removed or I'm disconnected or find a way of keeping a trickle charge to this or if this isn't possible then try and connect it to the mains for sort of eight to twelve hours every two to six weeks now we've got solar panels on our van like a lot of people so that should be enough even in the middle of the winter to keep our leisure battery charged enough because we don't want to make our let our leisure battery or our engine battery go flat 
and when it does you may not be able to charge it and you'll have to replace it and you might invalidate your warranty so you can you know like on our van you can actually disconnect the uh, engine battery by turning your ignition key to a certain way so we will be doing that this winter and also when you do go and check on your van and start the engine make sure you let the air con circulate and get up to temperature because again that keeps the whole system oiled so there you go a set of simple steps five steps five steps to sort your heating um, and water system out plus a few other bits of advice of things that we're doing for our van to get it ready for winter like i said whether you're parking for the whole winter or just leaving it for a week or two any time where the temperature is going to get frosty you want to make sure you follow these steps and as i said they're going to take you no more than half an hour or so and that is half an hour really well spent so that you don't have any grief loss of money um, when it comes to using your van again next spring so what did i miss anything that you agree with or disagree with in the video please leave a comment and of course if you found this video useful please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and so that you make sure that you are alerted every week when we release a new video other than that i hope you're still planning to get out and about this winter as we are but even so we still intend to follow the steps that we have outlined in this video so we will see you out on the road again mm -hmm.